This is Chicago, queen of the Great Lakes and wonder city of the Middle West, where American enterprise and progressive people have combined to build in less than a century the second largest metropolis in North America. A panorama of its picturesque skyline fronting Michigan Avenue reveals that the city fathers built with an eye for practical stability as well as for beauty of design. We soon learn that Chicago is a city of superlatives, outstanding among which is the Stevens Hotel, the largest in the world, containing 3,000 rooms. Chicago's many fine hotels have been instrumental in making it one of America's foremost convention and tourist cities. There being over 150,000 rooms available within the Metropolitan Center and several thousand more in the suburban districts. Driving along Michigan Avenue, we pass the Chicago Public Library, containing over 800,000 volumes. And there before us, in all its white majesty, is the world-renowned Wrigley Building. Among the other architectural masterpieces of the city are the Shedd Aquarium, the Chicago Museum of Natural History, formerly known as the Field Museum, and Soldier Field Stadium built in the classic tradition of ancient Greek and Roman architecture. A boat trip on the Chicago River reveals another thrilling view of the city's great skyscrapers, including the Chicago Tribune Building, home of one of the world's leading newspapers, and the Wrigley Tower. Musical appreciation has always been one of Chicago's inherent characteristics, and it is convincingly confirmed by this 42-story building, occupying a whole city block and housing the civic opera in which the world's finest music is featured. And now we come to another superlative, the Merchandise Mart, said to be the largest building of its kind on the face of this earth. Like an artery of life, the Chicago River flows from Lake Michigan through the heart of the city and provides transportation for a continuous procession of boats carrying cargo to and from the Great Lakes. It was along this unassuming waterway that native Indians once paddled their canoes and early white traders first planted the seeds of commerce that started a growth so fast and stupendous that it has never been equal in the building of a great metropolis. In addition to commercial shipping, the Chicago River is also a terminus for the palatial pleasure craft that ply the Great Lakes. And here is one just starting out on a summer excursion trip through Benton Harbor, Michigan. So much for boats in the Chicago River. Now let us turn our attention to trains, for Chicago is served by about 40 railroads, making it the largest transportation center in the world. Over 1,500 passenger trains arrive at or depart from Chicago every 24 hours, transporting more than 270,000 passengers. From the observation tower of the Board of Trade Building, we look down into the city's canyons of commerce, where many of the world's greatest financial deals are transacted. Gracing the top of the Board of Trade Building is the statue of Ceres, goddess of grain and she proudly presides over the largest and most important grain exchange in the nation. And here is Randolph Street, the Rialto of Chicago, where the modern Bismarck and Sherman hotels mingle with a fascinating and colorful array of fine theaters, dance pavilions, shops and restaurants of every kind and description, unique among which is this quaint landmark patterned after medieval Europe's old Heidelberg. And this is State Street, home of the famous Chicago Theater and the celebrated department store which was founded about 80 years ago by Marshall Field, one of Chicago's pioneer leaders and champions of private enterprise. State Street is regarded as the world's most concentrated retail shopping center over $450 million worth of merchandise being sold here annually. We find the center of greatest activity where State crosses Madison Street. We are now gazing upon the Palmer House, one of Chicago's best-known hotels, founded by Potter Palmer, 
who is credited with being the pioneer father of State Street. And here again is another superlative, claimed to be the tallest hotel in the world, the Morrison, towering 650 feet above street level. On the North Shore Drive, we behold what is known as the Gold Coast, so-called because of the wealth that is said to be represented by the people who live in this exclusive section of the city. And now let's go for a ride along the shore of the lake, taking what is known locally as the Outer Drive. At the northern terminus of the Outer Drive stands the renowned Edgewater Beach Hotel, an institution that has long associated itself with the traditions of Chicago hospitality. On our return trip over the same drive, we pass through the Gold Coast section again, where the towering Palm Olive Building and the impressive Drake Hotel form a fitting background for an exclusive bathing beach. Buying with bathing as a popular diversion for the outdoor-loving people of Chicago is the sport of fishing, and this is a common sight all through the fishing season. The lake abounds with perch, herring, and lake trout, and the supply is replenished at yearly intervals. Let those of us who once thought of Chicago as a landlocked metropolis on the parched prairies of the Middle West, far from the cooling breezes of the seven seas, gaze on this evidence to the contrary and realize that Lake Michigan provides Chicago with all the aquatic diversions of the ocean side and at the same time acts as the air conditioner of the city itself. This modern apartment house forms an interesting contrast with an old landmark that was built at the turn of the last century by Potter Palmer, one of the pioneer merchants and builders of the city. A page from the past when a man's home was really his castle. And now we come to what is Chicago's most revered landmark, the old water tower, one of the few constructions that survived the great fire of 1871, and a silent reminder of the indomitable spirit that built the Chicago of today. The old stone gateway to the stockyards is another landmark, and through its portals now pass the buyers and sellers who trade in the world's largest cattle market. In Jackson Park stands the Fine Arts Building, a survivor of the famous Columbian Exposition, which was held in Chicago in 1893. This beautiful institution is now known as the Museum of Science and Industry. Chicago's proximity to Lake Michigan has naturally made her citizens very boat conscious, and we find many harbors that provide haven for colorful pleasure craft. In one of the picturesque little yacht harbors of Jackson Park, among a variegated array of modern pleasure boats, there is another reminder of the world's Columbian Exposition, and here it is, an exact replica of the Santa Maria, flagship of Christopher Columbus. The Statue of the Republic in Jackson Park is the only sculptural record left to commemorate the memory of the Columbian Exposition. Not far from here stands the famous Fountain of Time, sculptured by Laredo Taft and dedicated in 1922, considered to be the most elaborate and imaginative work of purely ideal sculpture ever executed in this country. Time goes, you say. Ah, no. Alas, time stays. We go. That thought, so well expressed by Austin Dobson, was the inspiration for this masterpiece. And now, in the hour of twilight before the internationally famous Buckingham Fountain, we gaze upon our concluding scene of Chicago. This beautiful creation is the gift of the late Catherine Buckingham, patron of the arts, who also provided for its maintenance in perpetuity. A fitting symbol of the magnanimous spirit that guides the great heart of Chicago, the beautiful. Beautiful.